Pastor Jonathan here, uh, and uh, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, we're doing a little devotional series every Wednesday at noon, uh, focusing on uh, the remedy and uh, really what's, what we are trying to do during Lent is really return to the Lord and, and, and actually focus on Him as we prepare for Good Friday and Easter. So uh, this little spin-off series that we're doing from our sermon series on Sundays called The Remedy, uh, where on, on Wednesdays we're just focusing on the Ten Commandments and how Jesus is our remedy for each of those. Uh, so thank you for joining us here for, for that. Uh, just a quick uh, invite I want to send your way is that uh, if you've not checked out in-person worship yet, uh, please consider it. Uh, we, we do a great job here of making sure that things are, are safe. Uh, we take lots of precautions, wear lots of masks, uh, social distancing, and, and we take temperature checks and all that kind of stuff at the door. Uh, so it's a safe place to be at. So if you've not tried it out, uh, please come and try it. It's, it's great. Uh, I'd love to meet you and all that kind of stuff in a safe way. Uh, so, like I said, we're doing this little remedy series, and um, uh, we're, we're, we're focusing on uh, really the second table of the law. Uh, and so you might, you might you know, think that's like Moses and, and all that kind of stuff. You might usually see like two tablets, and, and traditionally the church kind of thinks about um, uh, kind of like there's two categories of the commandments. There's the first three commandments, so you shall know their gods, uh, keep God's name holy, and then also uh, to, to honor the Sabbath day, right? Those are the first three. And so we're gonna, that's the first table, and we're going to focus on the second table. Last week we talked about the fourth commandment, which is honor your father and your mother. We talked about authority. You can find that video. We have that archived still. Uh, but today we're going to focus on the fifth commandment, which, did, which says you shall not murder. And one last thing we're going to do, too, is show how each of the commandments is not just a thing that you have to do, but they're also promises. That uh, the commandments are actually worded, you shall do this for a reason. Because it's saying, it's promising you that not only you shall do this, but it's also saying, hey, guess what? In Christ, in Jesus, one day you shall do this. Uh, so we're going to look at the fifth commandment uh, through this way as well. So let's actually dive into the fifth commandment and go ahead and read it. So this probably sounds familiar to you. we got our handy-dandy catechism here. Uh, and uh, if you've not uh, dusted off your catechism in a while, friends, it's time. It's, it's great stuff. So Fifth Commandment says, You shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor and his body, but help and support him in every physical need. So what I love about uh, the, the catechism and, and the way it kind of frames each of the commandments is that it, it, it makes it not just a avoidance thing, but also a, all right, then how do we then live our lives sort of thing. So uh, I love how he says that it's, it's not just about murdering, but actually uh, making sure that we aren't hurting or harming our neighbor. And also a, what do you actually do then it is actually helping and supporting them in, in all of their physical needs. And I think that's, that's such a gold mine. For, for how we should live today. Um, because the fifth commandment, each of the commandments actually has something that is trying, trying to protect, right? An institution that God gives us. And while the fourth commandment, honor your father and mother, uh, gives this institution of authority, the fifth commandment gives this institution as, of, of life as a gift from God. And I think that here's another important distinction that we have to make is that the fifth commandment isn't just protecting the idea of just being alive, but actually living. Of course, being alive is an important part of it. You know, we, we hold life sacred, but life is sacred not because it just has, happens to have a, a, a breath and a beating heart and all that kind of stuff, but life is sacred because it's a gift from God. So I think we also have to emphasize not just being alive, but living, flourishing, because it is a gift from God. And I think the other thing, too, is that, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. Like, the fifth commandment is, is one of those commandments where people would probably most easily say, well, pff, I haven't broken that one. I haven't murdered anybody. You know, but the fifth commandment is not just about murder. It's not just not murdering somebody. The fifth commandment is, is not harming somebody or even letting harm come to somebody. The fifth commandment is, is also not begrudging somebody else their life or their well-being. It, it's, it's not looking down on people for that. And I think that when we think about the fifth commandment, we have to think about, it's not just obeying the fifth commandment. Okay, it says I can't murder, Pfft, fine. It's also keeping the fifth commandment, like, like, like attending to it, so that, so that when you obey the fifth, or when you keep the fifth commandment, you're actually trying to enhance God's gift of life for others. 
that you see that somebody else has been given the gift of life by God, and now you're trying to say, all right, wow, that's a sacred life. I need to go and enhance that life. I need to try to, to help that, that life, that gift of life be cultivated for them. And of course, we fail at that big time, don't we? I mean, of course, we murder people. You know, people murder people. There, there's, there's, a, there's abortion, there's genocide, there's, there's all these horrible, horrendous things that we see in the news and in the world, school shootings and all that kind of stuff. So, so as a society, as a world, as humanity, we, we, we have a big F when it comes to the fifth commandment anyway, right? But, but we also do this in, in micro ways on a daily basis, don't we? We, we, we look down on others. We, we're, we, we have racism in, in, our, in our veins. We, we're, we're sexist. We, we, we turn our backs on others when we see them coming to harm or, or some, some way, somehow. I mean, we, even in, as Americans, when it comes around to election time or voting time, we tend to vote in our own self-interest, don't we? And, and we don't always vote with the interest of others, especially others that we might disagree with. We, we make life and a gift of life something about us, and we often neglect or even begrudge other people the gift of life that God has given to them. Which kind of makes us think, all right, so, so what's, what's the remedy? You know, how do, how do we get out of this, this muck of this world where we constantly uh, fail at the fifth commandment? I think it's really interesting that, that Jesus saves us by actually obeying and keeping the fifth commandment. I mean, if you want to take it to the extreme, Jesus saves us by being murdered. Jesus is murdered in order to give us life. Isn't that kind of crazy to think about? So, so while, while he is the one who's being, um, uh, the fifth commandment is being broken against him, that's also the ultimate way that he actually gives us life. He's the ultimate life giver by being murdered on the cross. I mean, it, it's kind of crazy to think about. And of course, Jesus is the ultimate life giver, is he not? I mean, he gives us not only this creation that we live in right now, creation not only came from him as the ultimate life giver, but he's the ultimate life giver in that he also gives us a new creation. Maybe you haven't really uh, thought about this concept a whole lot before, but the, the biblical hope of, of everything is not just going to heaven when we die. It's actually what happens when we come back. Our, our, our trip to heaven is a round trip. It's not a one-way trip. So that Jesus, one day, will bring all of heaven down to earth, and he's going to give life again to all of creation with, with, with heaven. Like, heaven's going to be packed up in a U-Haul one day and brought down here, and Jesus is going to dwell on earth forever. That's what we call the new creation, because he is the ultimate life giver. Creation is like the arena of life. And so that's, I think, where we find the promise in the fifth commandment, is that Jesus is the life giver. And one day, we shall not murder in any sense of the word, whether it be literally or figuratively, whether it be on a macro scale or a micro scale. We're going to be in a place where life is a gift. It is sacred. It's something that goes on forever. I think last week I mentioned, you know, think about the Ten Commandments this way. Like, what if everybody in the world obeyed the Ten Commandments perfectly? And not just obeyed them, but, but kept them and cultivated and practiced them. Wouldn't that feel like heaven on earth? Friends, that's the idea. The Ten Commandments are literally a picture of what heaven on earth is going to be like. And that heaven on earth, what that's going to be like, is a, a planet, a creation, a cosmos of life to its fullest. Where, where all creatures are going to thrive. They're going to flourish. Where, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of curious, what are the ways that we're going to see new life come about because Jesus is the life giver going into eternity? We will have eternal life. That's the promise of the fifth commandment. Uh, and so it's way more than just do not murder. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful for you today. Uh, friends, if you don't have a catechism or, or you maybe maybe you're interested in, in a new catechism, I love these things. Uh, we have these available here at Trinity, so come and uh, ask us about it, check it out. Uh, but friends, would you please pray with me as we close today?
Uh, Lord Jesus, we, we give you thanks that you are the one who not only gives us life in the first place, but you continue to, to uh, create new life with every uh, a baby that we, that, we, uh, that we meet and greet, with every uh, uh, new creation that you continue. Uh, and, and Lord Jesus, we thank you that you continue to give us life even by your death on the cross, where, where it's by your death uh, where you were murdered that you give life to its fullest. Lord Jesus, we thank you also that you promise to bring about the new creation where uh, we, will, uh, we will live life to its fullest on a daily basis for eternity. Uh, Lord, we ask that you give us hope for that day, that you give our world hope for that day, that knowing that you are the remedy uh, to all that is wrong with this world, that you are the remedy as the divine life giver. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Uh, one last thing I'll do is I'll invite you. We've got um, a walk-up communion available right now. Uh, so talk about Jesus as a life giver. He gives us his own body and blood uh, to give us that life. We've got walk-up communion available uh, on Thursdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Sundays uh, between our worship services from uh, 10 to 11 p.m. Uh, and then, uh, I'm sorry, a.m. Uh, you don't want to come that late at night to church. Uh, and then we've also got uh, walk-up communion available on Monday mornings uh, at, uh, at, at 9 a.m. as well, and that goes until 10 a.m. So uh, looking forward to seeing you and meeting you. Uh, friends, go and enjoy that gift of life that God has given to you. Thanks. Bye.